If you have a 5th gen 2019 and up Ford Ranger, you just put a leveling kit on it. You're the type of person who likes to do everything yourself and you don't want to take it to an alignment shop. I'm going to show you how to do an alignment with nothing but basic hand tools in your own garage. So after you put a leveling kit on one of these trucks or literally any vehicle with full independent front suspension, what happens is as the suspension travels downward, the upper and lower control arms follow an arc. They do not move straight up and down. So when they follow that arc, the wheel isn't necessarily going to be straight this way or this way after it's sitting in a different position. First thing you need to do is set your camber. Once camber is set, you then need to set your toe. Your caster angle is not going to be affected by a lift kit on this specific truck. However, on some vehicles it might. So like I said, you need to set your camber first before you set your toe. All you need to set the camber on this truck is a 21 millimeter, a 24 millimeter, a piece of angle iron, a level. You need an angle finder. However, if you have a smartphone, you can just download one or you can go to a hardware store and buy one. You can do this without an angle finder. Just look up how to use a level to set camber and then you have to do the math on a calculator. It's like some sort of crazy fucking trigonometry and you'll get the right amount of camber if you do it correctly. However, with the angle finder, it makes it very easy. Now, the first thing you gotta do, take your level, put it on the hood, get it as straight as possible, make sure that your hood's good and closed, and then make sure that your truck is on a level surface. It's not. Step one to this procedure is to get my truck level. So obviously the right side needs to come up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna back the truck up, put a piece of plywood down on this side and drive over it and see if that gets me level. All right, all I had to do to get the truck level was drive it up on a three quarter inch piece of plywood and it's perfect. So I actually lied at the beginning of this video. You need one more tool and you need a tape measure, okay? So what you need to do is measure the actual width of the rim from where the rubber meets the wheel to the other end. For this 17 inch wheel, it's about 18 and a half inches. Now that you got that measurement of 18 and a half inches, you need to cut a piece of angle iron to 18 and a half inches or whatever your measurement is. Or I put a piece of duct tape on each side so when I touch my wheel with this, it doesn't scratch it. Now the next thing you need to do is jack the vehicle up so that the point where you can get this flat across the wheel is vertical. So you see, if I try to put this vertically, it's being interfered by the design of the wheel. I need it to sit flush and vertical like this. So I'm gonna jack it up and spin the wheel just a little bit. So now what you need to do is now that you got the vehicle back down on the ground, have this piece of angle iron vertical like this. Make sure it's touching both edges of the wheel so that you get a good angle of what the wheel is at. This is where once you hold that on there flat, I can't do this with two hands. So let's just imagine that this is up here on the wheel like this. Okay, so once you get that up there, you need to use your angle finder and put it on this flat surface and that will tell you what degrees your wheel is in either direction. You need to look up the spec for your specific vehicle so for this vehicle in particular, the spec is negative 0.08 degrees to positive 0.08 degrees. When I measured mine, I was at 1.3 degrees positive. So I need to go down a lot. So I need to go down like 1.3 degrees at least. Now, once you got all that, pick the truck back up and move underneath. So now that you got your measurement, chances are you're out of spec because you have too many positive degrees of camber and you need to add negative camber. How this works on this truck specifically, there's bolts at the base of the lower control arm. There's a bolt here and a bolt there. What you gotta do is use that 21 and 24 to loosen these, not all the way, but just loosen them up so you can easily spin this with a wrench. Now once you got that loose, you'll notice when you spin the bolt, not the nut, this little egg shape spins. And it's between two pins. You'll notice that as you spin that, it moves the control arm in and out and that changes the camber of the wheel. From what I've seen a lot of people saying on the internet is you pretty much have to max out negative camber on this when you do a leveling kit to get it perfect. So how I max, so I'm just going to start by maxing it out because I was at like positive 1.5 degrees, which is like way too high. However, it might not go that low. So what I want to do is turn it until the tallest part of this egg shape is facing the inside, like as the engine. Because what's happening is it's pushing further on this side than this side. Therefore, it's pushing 
the bottom of the control arm that way, which is moving the bottom of the wheel out. You need to do the same thing for the back as well. So I'm just gonna start by maxing both of these out and see where I'm at. Make sure when you take your measurement, you put the vehicle back on the ground. As long as the nuts under here are snug, they don't have to be tight before you set it back down just to make sure your measurement's good. But after you tighten these bolts down, just double check, pick it up, set it back down, and make sure your measurement's still where it needs to be and that's where you're gonna leave it. So with both of those camber adjustments maxed out completely, my camber measurement came in at exactly 0 0.07 degrees negative, which is perfectly in spec. You would usually prefer to have a little bit of negative camber rather than a little bit of positive camber. Even though it is a pickup truck, it does improve handling to an extent. So now that I got this side set, I'm gonna tighten down the bolts and I didn't get a torque spec on them, but taking them off, they were probably around 70 to 80 foot pound. I'm not gonna use a torque wrench. I'm just gonna tighten them back down because to me, it's not that big of a deal. Once you're done with that, do literally the exact same thing on the other side, go through the same procedure, and then your camber will be set. All right, now that you got your camber set, now you can go and set your toe. Set your toe, you need a couple more pieces of angle iron first off. Get two pieces of angle iron, and cut them to exactly 30 inches, and mark the center. Mark it with a paint marker or something so you can see it easily, and then it doesn't rub off. You're gonna need your level again, and you're gonna need a 14, a 19 and a 21 millimeter wrench. So what you're gonna do with these pieces of angle iron, there's two ways to do this. You can either do what I did. I used some safety wire and I wired it to the wheel so that the outsides are touching the tires and the center is centered directly with the hub. And then I use the level to make sure this is level. Now you can use, you know, ratchet straps, clamps, um, or anything just make sure when you tie this it's not tied tight it's just snug enough to hold it in place but if you tie it really tight and it starts to squish in on the tire it'll skew your numbers a little bit and you might not get it perfect the other way to do this is to take the wheel completely off and just use C clamps and clamp it to the bottom of the brake rotor same thing center it level it make sure you put the lug nuts back in to hold the brake rotor straight on the hub and then you can measure it like that and it accomplishes the same thing. However, once you take the wheels off, you have to put the jack stands at the ends of the hub so that the weight of the truck is back on the wheels because you need to do the alignment with weight on it, not with the truck in the air. So what you need to do is take your tape measure, hook it on the end of that piece of angle iron and come to this piece and then get your measurement. This one appears to be 70 and... Okay, so my front measurement was 70 and 5 8 My rear measurement was 72 and 15 16. So my rear measurement, we'll say this top is going to be my rear. My rear measurement was 72 and 15 16. My bottom or front measurement was 70 and 5 8 My two sides are 30. That's why we cut these at exactly 30. Now, Look what we just fucking made. A trapezoid. Now most of you are like, fuck. I either didn't pay attention in geometry, I don't remember any geometry, or I'm going to a fucking alignment shop. You're out of your fucking mind. However, it's going to be really easy now because you don't have to do the formulas. We have the fucking internet now. Remember when your teacher said, you're not going to have a calculator in your pocket everywhere you go. And guess what you have in your fucking pocket everywhere you go? Type in trapezoid calculator, and I'm going to show you what you need to find. But the first thing you need to do, convert these to decimals. Okay, so now that you got these in decimals, what you need to find is you need to find these two angles. Because these angles will be your toe. Now, zero toe would mean that this is a 90 degree angle. However, you always want a little bit of toe in because it makes the vehicle handle better. However, the spec on this is per side, 
0 0.1 degrees negative to positive. 0 0.1 degrees negative to positive. So total toe should be 2 tenths of a degree. So ideally, we want this angle here to be 89.9. Degrees and the same thing over here. So once we get in plug into our calculator online We'll plug in all these sides Okay, and we'll find angles It'll shit out what this current angle is So I'm gonna see what my current angle is and I'm sure there's a better way to do this You can probably do this all with a lot of math if you're really good But basically what's gonna happen is as I turn the tie rods it's gonna make this shorter and it's going to make this longer however i don't know by how much what i'm just going to do is put it in the calculator see what my angle is then move my tie rods out some to where i think they should be and then measure measure and check to see how close it seems a little bit tedious but i'm sure it won't be i can tell you right now that the toe in is probably going to be way too far let's say three eighths of an inch maybe i'm going to go out on, on a limb here and say toe in we'll see if i'm right on that but that's what i'm guessing the difference is going to actually end up needing to be so i'm going to type all this in and see what happens now once you get in here and crack these nuts loose these retaining nuts one thing you need to remember is first make sure your steering wheel is perfectly straight otherwise your steering will be crooked when you go down the road and the second thing you need to know is as long as the wheel was straight before, it will remain straight as long as whatever adjustment you make on this side, you make exactly on the other side. So there's a hex on the end of here, and we'll call each flat side of that hex a flat. So when I say turn it one flat, that means that this flat part of the hex will be where the next flat part of the hex is. So my toe was in too far so what I need to do is move both of the wheels out so how I'm gonna do that is I'm just going to spin this just like any other bolt I'm gonna turn it left as if I was loosening the bolt out of the tie rod so that it will extend it and push the front of the wheel that way I'll do the same thing on the other side and that should should decrease the amount of toe in that we have Okay, this is the sequence I went down. So my first measurements plugged into a calculator after I found them in decimal was 87.8 degrees. So what that means is I'm 87.8 degrees. Subtract that from 90, and that's my amount of toe in. So that's 2.2 degrees of toe in per side when I really only want 0.1 so it's very towed in and if I were to drive this the tires would be bald in a week So you can see over here the sequence that I went through these are my measurements I kept moving until I got this number and Plugged in gave me that 89.9 degrees which equals 0.2 degrees of total toe in which means I had 72 inches in the back 71 and 7 eighths in the front. So 1 eighth of an inch of toe in from the outside of the tires is what will get you the amount of toe for this particular application. If you have wheel spacers or change the size of your tires or anything other than just the stock wheels that come on it, they're like 265, 55, 17s or something like that, this number will most likely change. Now, when you tighten up this lock nut, on the tie rod don't hold here because you can spin this and throw your adjustment out of whack so you'll see there's a little flat right here that a 19 millimeter wrench fits on and very carefully tighten this while holding this without spinning it in this direction at all as long as you don't spin that your toe will stay perfect so once you get the tie rods tightened down the last thing you got to do is just take it for a test drive the only thing you're really looking for when you take it on a test drive is to make sure that the steering wheel is straight if the steering wheel is not straight which it should be as long as you did everything correctly the steering wheel should be straight or very very close to being straight the steering wheel is not straight what you have to do basically push both of the wheels at the same time to whichever direction is opposite the wheel is turned so for example, so say my wheel was 
turned like this and that's me driving straight. I need to loosen both of the tie rods and then turn that one left so that wheel goes that way and turn this one right so this wheel comes this way as well. Now if it was about that much I would turn it about one flat on that side and then one flat on this side. Now don't trust that just because you did the exact amount of turns on each side that your alignment's still going to be perfect. So put the pieces of angle iron back on, double check that whatever your toe-in measurement was, so let's say an eighth of an inch, just double check to make sure you're still at an eighth of an inch of toe-in. Take it for a test drive again, make sure that the steering wheel is straight. When I did it, my steering wheel came out perfectly straight. I'm happy with it, I'm done, and that's the finished job. And that's it, you're good to go. You just saved yourself at least 100 bucks on a full alignment job. So, doing these alignments doesn't need to be as hard as you think. You don't need a $20,000 machine to do an alignment. If you don't trust it this way, that's fine. Go pay for your alignment. If it makes you feel better, go do it. However, computerized alignment machines have not been out for, in the grand scheme of things, that long. It is a completely acceptable and accurate way to align anything with a tape measure. With like, say, a Dana 60 straight axle, you can pretty much just set your alignment and forget about it because things like camber and caster don't really exist on here. Or at least they're not adjustable. And if your steering wheel is crooked, you just adjust the drag on. It's pretty straightforward. This truck was aligned with a tape measure and there are about 30,000 miles on this tire and if you can see perfectly even wear.